Jonathan Kojo, welcome to Africa 54. Thank you very much. You are one of those uh, young, uh, budding entrepreneurs uh, who is trying to uh, come up with his own uh, green uh, revolution. Uh, tell me more about that. We are identifying technological trends. And it's quite obvious that e-commerce is one of such trends when it comes to you know our jurisdiction, that is Africa. Now we know that a number of people, uh, because of globalization, can access products from anywhere at all in the world using internet. And this is what we have done. So in our small way, we've come out with a technological platform that is meant to give especially African producers and manufacturers a global market platform while allowing them to use you know, this same platform to contribute directly to tree planting. That is offsetting the amount of carbon that they emit. So this is what uh, Jowato is set to do. And uh, we have rolled out the model, and this is what we are doing at the moment. If I hear you correctly, uh, you, your business model, you are sort of like an e-commerce platform, but at the same time, you're trying to get people to contribute to tree planting uh, when they use your services. Our model basically is trying to get everyone involved in the funding process of tree planting. We, we know very well that uh, at the moment, we depend on organizations and few corporate bodies who want to contribute a little to, you know, as a, a way of contributing to their social responsibilities and all of that. But we are looking at a model that can capture everyone in, the, in funding tree planting activities. How did you come up with uh, this uh, fascinating uh, uh, way of doing business? One day, I came out from my house and, uh, and I realized that the tree was cut down. Um, within a few days, uh, a lady and, you know, in the company of some men were planting a kiosk. You know, after a few months, I realized this kiosk was basically meant to sell share butter. You know, then I, I started wondering, I mean... I was trained as a computer scientist, and I was thinking, is there a way to help this woman who, in her quest to make life better, has fallen down a tree, a whole tree that probably was there for about 20 years, maybe, I mean, with the internet, and we can get her to take her products globally just by giving her uh, a store on a website, and at the same time, save several other trees that would have been cut down for the purpose of you know, putting kiosks that will probably serve a few people around that community. How many uh, people use your platform? At the moment, we have about 147 sellers, that's vendors, mostly uh, local entrepreneurs. We have up to about 4,000, over 4,000 active subscribers. And uh, we also generate a lot of sales, you know, uh, daily on our platform. Every day we have people believing in our dream. We have people who care about trees also shopping from our platform. And uh, yes, it, it's more of a new revolution in the e-commerce industry here in Ghana. How are people embracing uh, this Go Green uh, revolution? There's a new wave, and, and this wave is catching up with people. People are beginning to see the essence of trees. Even children now understand the value of trees. The heat is becoming very unbearable. And the issue of climate change is becoming very real, you know, with very practical examples that we see daily. And we have people, you know, really aligning with us. And, and, and also the sellers, they also feel that, look, this is a good opportunity for me to give back to my land. So I would want to sell on your platform. And I would invite my customers to buy on your platform so that we will be able to together give back to the land. To what extent has uh, climate change had an impact on uh, that part of Ghana where you are? Northern Ghana can be very hot with temperatures rising sometimes over 40 degrees. I'm not an expert in climate change, but I always give this one single example. While I was growing up, I remember that uh, when it rained, we had hailstones. And I, I don't remember the last time I saw hailstones again. And I don't think our children might be seeing hailstones if we don't do something. And I remember talking with my mom, and my mom would always tell me that, look, there used to be a lot of trees. And even as early as January, February, in northern Ghana, we used to have rains. There's still no rain in northern Ghana. And I think we understand to the extent of, you know, which there's a lot of drought, a lot of heat. Uh, these hailstones, farmers can no longer predict the rain. All these, for me, are clear signs that climate change is real. And, uh, you know, we are suffering the consequences of it. 
Thank you so much, Jonathan. Thank you very much.